about your work in us and your plans for the coming season. We fix our eyes on you and invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in power. Lord, give us eyes to see things as you do, to see in the spirit, not just the natural, and to hope in you. Amen. So today I want to share with you what we've been discerning from the Lord as vision for St. Mary's, as we've been praying about it together through our prayer and fasting days, through discernment with staff and PCC, and also with our recent church survey confirming and feeding ideas into the shape of what we believe the Lord is leading us in. We've been seeing confirmation of the new things and his hand on the old as well. We've been discerning priorities for the next season. Vision is about seeing what could be, looking ahead with eyes of faith and open hearts to Father God, catching hold of his purposes and a sense of where we're going. It's about seeing the bigger picture to catch a sense of what we could become. And then we take steps to get from here to there. When we know what we're aiming for, we can make plans. And I won't have time to talk about all the detail in terms of the actions in every area, but there is a document at the back of church which gives some more detail, what it looks like, and I would love you to take it away and pray into it. And there's also um, a leaflet which is like shorter. When we have a sense of vision, we can give some things a really confident yes. We know our priorities, and at the same time, we know that it's okay to say no to other things in order to make our bigger yes possible. There are so many things we could do, but it really helps to know the focus of our calling for now. I wonder what do you want to become? What really matters? Imagine in three years' time there was a church newspaper. What headlines would you love to see there about our life and our mission? We need to take the long view. The Lord's deep work takes time to grow in us, like oak trees that grow incrementally from little tiny acorns. What starts with small beginnings can become truly strong in the Lord. It's important to be confident in our spiritual foundations so we can be building on them with good materials that we trust will last into all eternity. What matters in life is what will last in heaven. What matters most is finding out what pleases the Lord and living his kingdom purposes. Are we hungry for his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven? Are we confident of the core of what it means to be his church, his body? And specifically here, reaching our family, friends, neighbors, colleagues, networks, local community, and impacting the wider world, do we have eyes to see and appreciate what he's already doing in us? Our vision for the next season can't be totally comprehensive because we're a church that's regularly listening to his prophetic voice and following the wind of the Spirit. But when he's been speaking, we need to get stuck in. And we want to be a community where it's okay to have a go, to make mistakes and try again, not to be held back by perfectionism, but free to have fun and be creative along the way. Whilst putting the vision together has benefited from a multi-layered listening to one another and to God, we're not pretending that it came down from on high on tablets of stone. So if you think that there are things that are missing either now or in the coming months, then I'd really encourage you to come and chat with me. Some of us love to know every detail of what's coming, and others are quite allergic to having our lives too pinned down with plans. So don't worry, God knows us. Some of us will have a hundred new ideas before breakfast, and others of us know that need to know that there's a real grounding for ideas. And we can be developing one main thing whilst making other smaller incremental changes that will make all the difference in the long term. People sometimes talk about 1% shifts. First, I want to remind us of our core vision, which is summed up as encountering God rooted in Christ and transforming lives. So what are we like? We are a loving, lively, evangelical Anglican church with a passion for God, a vision to see lives transformed and a mission to impact the world around us with the good news of Jesus Christ. We're a member of the New Wine Network of Churches, 
The Spirit of the Lord has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. That's in Isaiah 61, verse 1. Encountering God rooted in Christ and transforming lives is our overarching vision statement, and it helps us to never lose sight of the first importance of encountering God. This is an upwards-looking posture. We're passionate for his presence, seeking first his kingdom, worshipping him. Our relationship with Father God is what life is for forever. He's where our help comes from. Put simply, we have a passion for God's presence. An encounter with God, that's the first step to knowing him. And it continues to be the main thing as we walk with him once we've received salvation. We're hungry for him, not for what we can get from him, but to seek his face. If you imagine this core vision statement as like a circling spiral with each statement flowing into the next, it flows round and round. So developing transformed lives is only going to happen as people encounter God and become rooted in Christ. Apart from him, we can do nothing. That's what Jesus says. He says that in John 15. We are dependent on him. And we are rooted in Christ. This is a rooted posture, a more inward, in-looking posture. We aim for Jesus to be the center of who we are and all we do. We long to know him more deeply. So pause for a moment to think about how you apprentice your life to Jesus. We're called to follow him, to become like him in actions and character, to lead others to him, and together as a church to be his body on earth. How can we ensure that our evangelism and discipleship is always rooted in Christ, so that in all we do, we point to him and let him be Lord? We are a church shaped by God's word in the Bible and his spirit. These are our foundations for our life and mission. We're growing in the spirit's fruit and gifts, sent to bring comfort and freedom as we live in Jesus and his love. And our vision is for transforming lives. This is an outward posture. We've looked up, in and out. We have a passion to reach the lost and see lives transformed as we welcome the Holy Spirit's work in us and in our community. Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 3 says, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. I'm passionate that we each catch hold of this and see that no one should remain as they are as they come to Christ. We are a church about kingdom breakthrough. Lives change, and so communities can change. And we will pray for this, and the enemy will not prevail, because light comes into the darkness. Jesus breaks the chains of sin, pain, and death. He rescues us from the things that steal life. Sin and evil come in so many forms. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to bring us abundant life. And none of us could claim to have never sinned. But as Jesus takes us through repentance to deep joy in him because of the cross, he graciously places on our heads a crown of honor. We are offered full life in him. And this is a freedom we long to share with others. A vision that's worth fighting for in prayer. We are talking about spiritual things. This is so much more than just human programs. It's so important that we understand our vision is about spiritual encounter. The Lord encountering us, rooting us in him and transformation. Isaiah says, so they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. That's 61 verse 3. It's all for his glory, isn't it? We live for his glory. We move from instability to stability in him, from chaos to peace in him, from darkness to light. And what we receive, we share. The river of life flows, Revelation 22. Isaiah declares that all who see them 
will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. We greatly delight in him because he's given us garments of salvation and a robe of righteousness. Isaiah 61 verse 9 and 10. We are so blessed and what treasure we have in these fragile jars of clay to offer those around us. I see us as a house of prayer for all nations. In this house of the Lord, we will pray and we will always be outward looking. Our serving flows from our relationship with God as an overflow. It's like breathing in and then breathing out. He's empowering us. We don't serve to win his favor, but because first we know we are loved and blessed. In obedience to Jesus and intimacy with God, we can know joy, even as we travel through difficult times. There's bubbles of joy in the wilderness places, as well as on the mountaintops. We, like Jesus, can learn to resist the devil with the word of God and the help of his spirit. We have discerned five priorities that God wants us to focus on to live out our vision at this point. It's one being a church for the poor. Two, welcoming the Holy Spirit. Three, embracing one another. Four, reaching the lost. And five, discipleship in a changing world. I want to briefly talk about things within these priorities that have been highlighted as important. My hope and prayer is that the actions taken in line with these areas will help us as a church to move forward and as part of that address areas where some are feeling dissatisfied so a church for the poor we know that it is a special calling on St Mary's to be a church for the poor we hear Isaiah 61 ringing in our ears the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor Jesus said this prophecy was fulfilled in him. So he is uniquely the source of good news. And he has the power to transform lives. His spirit in us stirs us in his mission to those who are affected by poverty, which causes such suffering and comes in many forms like material, emotional, spiritual and physical poverty with many ongoing consequences. We know that the Lord loves the marginalized and those that others can overlook who are struggling. There's so much need. It can be easy to be overwhelmed. But the Lord has been leading us to a new way of tackling poverty through the development of the CAP, that's Christians Against Poverty Hope Cafe project, which will start this year. You've already been hearing from Darren about plans and you've been doing a fabulous work of fundraising. It feels like we're on the cusp of something special and we can be grateful to the Lord for wanting to involve us in this and leading us to this, opening doors of support. We've seen an increase in favour, an increase in people of peace. Our CAP Debt Centre, which helps households to go debt-free using a Christian model of ministry, will be developed to include a pilot project. The cafe will be for CAP clients, ex-clients, their family and friends, and those who are referred to us. We'll be collaborating in the way we serve so that we draw on the help of others. We'll work with CAP church partners, and it's exciting to see the potential for new CAP partners to come on board who will support at such a time as this. The needs are growing as the cost of living is very challenging. Many people can't make a budget work. There's not enough coming in to cover the core essentials. And the CAP Pro Hope Project should be a sustainable way of working. We'll draw on various resources, invite others alongside and signpost as we discern what's most helpful. We're looking forward to see how the Lord works through loving community. And it will be such a privilege to be involved. It's really relational and means people can find support and friendship for far longer than would normally be possible through the usual cat visits. We'd love to offer connections into church life with socials, alpha and midweek groups. So please pray about how you could volunteer, how you could help and talk to Darren about what it might involve. 
Another key way we can engage with tackling poverty is through working with the Warwick District Food Bank, who have a distribution centre here on Wednesdays. We are a member church of the Food Bank, and we have a trustee. We believe God wants St Mary's to increase engagement with the work, enabling signposting between Food Bank and Cap Hope. We also offer prayer support when it's requested by those who come to Food Bank. We'd love to increase our engagement with the Sydney Centre as our main local community centre, with the staff, activities and their cafe. There's so much potential for getting to know our neighbours, for referrals between us, and working together as we listen to what's needed. Only two weeks ago, I was listening to a young person recalling a fun day at Fallow Hill at St Mary's Ran. We ran it with the Fallow Hill Residents Association and the local councillors. As we engage with our parish, including the Sydney Estate, it's great to see the fruit of faithful ministries that have built relationships spanning the generations. This is one of the greatest strengths of the loving local church. We're present and we're not going anywhere. We're not short term. There's a stickability that's transformative. And we continue to offer help to individuals with addictions and support with court and prison visits. We have a wealth of experience to draw on from our years of running Pathway for the season that's ahead of us with the Cap Hope Cafe. We'll continue to engage with other agencies in the area, looking about what's possible. Our church members volunteer with other local charities and are involved in running charities as well. Our midweek ministries like TLC and Outlook are key places where we make friendships with our neighbours and can be a support in times of need. We'd love to explore running short holiday clubs for our community. The Children's Clothing Bank will continue to be a resource to those who come to the centre as well as to be used by church members. These are some of the ways that we can prioritise our prayers and generosity in being a church for the poor in this next season. And welcoming the Holy Spirit, we're a church that seeks the presence of the Lord. So we will prioritise welcoming the Holy Spirit in main services, in times of prayer, like first priority prayer, Friday and Sunday morning prayer, fasting days and praise and soaking prayer evenings, daily time with God, and also in raising up people in their spiritual gifts. We know just how important prayer is and we need to be encountering him. So we'll make space for more ministry time, facilitating this after preaching, growing our prayer ministry offered after services, waiting on the Spirit and sharing words and testimonies. We need to be strengthening our musicians, pursuing God as he pursues us in joy and intimacy. We want to explore ways of children using their gifts in all age services. A couple of new ideas include developing our house of prayer through a prayer room in the hub or the church so we can facilitate prayer in a welcoming space here or at home. We expect seasons of focused prayer for ministry like our recent 40 days of prayer for the youth. We plan to hold occasional praise evenings with soaking prayer times and signposting to similar opportunities locally. We believe God wants us to explore forming a prophecy group and to offer spiritual gift training. Embracing one another is a priority, being hospitable. In our recent survey, a strength of the church was around the feeling that we're a loving community. As believers, we don't always agree on everything or with our church on everything, but it's really important that we continue to love and embrace one another that we keep on loving one another, even when it's hard. The areas to really focus in on this include whole church hospitality, small groups, and with children, family, and youth work. Whole church hospitality through our monthly church lunches has been great for feeling connected to one another and our mission. We're also building community and welcome through our Sunday night space and other socials. Perhaps you'd like to be involved in initiatives to support our newcomers. Along with the support of small groups, we can consider discipleship training for everyone, perhaps length courses for the whole church or similar. Could you be involved in a pastoral care team 
to help with visiting and with pastoral care to those who aren't in small groups. One of the areas of church life which God has been blessing is our children, family and youth work. What a blessing to have Darren and Jenny and all our dedicated volunteers serving our children and youth. We'd love to strengthen the running of Sunday groups, midweek groups for rockets and youth and social. We need to expand our volunteers to allow for a split of sparklers and flames on Sunday. We want to strengthen family devotions and explore running a rockets weekend away. And reaching the lost, we can see that the Lord is opening doors for our mission with schools. This is an area he's clearly blessing. We are thankful for the relationships that we've built with an increase in services, visits, assemblies, lunch club, lessons and seasonal experiences. We also host exams for those who are excluded and support Campion with a governor. We're running Youth Hour for this term, having been welcomed to advertise it at the Campion Christmas services. And it was great that they could sign up through the school electronic system. We plan to run Adult Alpha in the autumn. Please pray about getting involved. Small groups have been invited to prepare for this through praying for people and using the Talking Jesus course and the Isaiah 61 movement app. Our midweek groups, TLC and Outlook, are great for outreach. And we could improve our promotion of these and look to keep developing outreach opportunities linked with these. And discipleship in a changing world. The world around is changing very rapidly in many ways. And God's word never changes, but it's important to share it fresh with every generation and to consider prayerfully what that looks like. In our time, one of the greatest challenges for the worldwide church has been disagreements over sexuality. I'm available for ongoing conversations. Please let me know if it would help to meet. I hope we can keep talking. I know it can be very difficult, and I deeply care about you all. We need to love one another when we see things differently, and it's good to respect other people's consciences, trying to be considerate of one another. There's a shaking in the churches in our nation at the moment. We're not alone in this. Let's build a culture where we can disagree well and show love for one another. It's also important to me that our church does not move away from our traditional biblical doctrine on marriage and sexuality, upholding the Church of England's teaching. I carry a responsibility before Jesus for leading St. Mary's, and I know the seriousness of this as a teacher pastor, as well as wanting to be faithful to my ordination vows. My prayer is that we might catch a vision for how we can be an incredibly loving, kind community, welcoming everyone, being the kind of place where people know they can come and they'll be deeply loved, coming as they are and finding an impressively hospitable church family, encountering God, rooted in Christ and transforming lives. I see us being a church full of grace, truth and gentleness. It's the Holy Spirit who reminds us of the word of God and he works in us. He moves at his pace, informing us as disciples of Jesus, in giving us grace and power to walk with him. We need to encourage one another and be accountable to one another. There are many challenges that come with being his disciple and we all need his saving grace. We all need to keep turning to Jesus and away from our sin in repentance, depending on him. I hope we can be a church where we're being peacemakers as far as we're able. He's calling us to sacrificially love one another and to grow in holiness. We have so much to be thankful for. St. Mary's is a very special church. And we owe God a huge thanks for all he's already doing and will do. As we look forward, there's so much potential. There's such a great need and wide open doors for the gospel and kingdom transformation. 
the last several years have been challenging in various ways. But God's plans for us are good and give us hope. So let's pull together, being disciples who will invite others to become disciples, encountering God, rooted in Christ and transforming lives. Let's get really stuck in, investing in our life of mission together with prayer, time, energy and finance, with our eyes fixed on what Father God wants to do through us in being a church for the poor, welcoming the Holy Spirit, embracing one another, reaching the lost and being faithful disciples in a changing world. There's a document at the back of church which includes a non-exhaustive list of plans for each of the five priorities we've discerned. Please do pray through this and listen to see how the Lord is calling you to get involved in seeing our vision become a reality. Let's communicate well with one another and keep living for his glory. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your vision, for what you're forming in us, for your love. We thank you for your glory, for your kingdom. We seek first your kingdom. Come Holy Spirit and empower us. Come, Holy Spirit, and prompt us to know what you're saying to each one of us. You take us by the hand, and you lead us. We give you glory. We want to walk humbly with you. Thank you that your yoke is light. I thank you that you pull alongside us, Jesus. Thank you that you are our Lord. You are Lord of us, our lives. You are Lord of our church. You are Lord, sovereign Lord. And you have anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. So come Holy Spirit. Amen.